Good morning, my name is Alison Cabrera. I'm going to talk about tapaglifosin and cardiovascular outcomes in type 2 diabetes. Definition. What is tapagliflozin? Tapagliflozin is a medication belonging to the gliflozin family that is used for the treatment of diabetes mellitus. It was approved by the FDA on January 8, 2014 with the indication of control of hyperglycemia in type 2 diabetic patients. There's only one SGLT2 inhibitors work. Now, SGLT2 inhibitors are used in type 2 diabetes to help to reduce the blood sugar levels. They differ slightly from most anti-diabetic drugs, which work by either increasing the insulin in the body or increasing the insulin sensitivity of the cells of the body. And the objective of increasing the insulin or the insulin sensitivity is to get the body to take more glucose out of the blood and to store it in the tissues. And that's how they reduce blood sugar levels. However, in SGLT2 inhibitors, they work slightly differently. They work by causing the kidneys to excrete glucose into the urine. And by excreting glucose into the urine, you reduce the amount of glucose or sugar that's in the blood and the rest of the body. Applications in medicine. The primary efficacy outcomes were MACE and a composite of cardiovascular death or hospitalization for heart failure. Secondary efficacy outcomes were a renal composite, 40% decrease in estimated glomerular flirtation rate to less than 60 millimeters per minute per 1.73 square meters of body surface area, new end stage renal disease or death from renal or cardiovascular causes, and death from any cause. The study of patients enrolled. Over the past two decades, several studies have highlighted the importance of intensive glucose lowering therapy, blood pressure control, and statin use to reduce the risk of cardiovascular complications and mortality in patients with diabetes. But the long term trends of mortality and cardiovascular outcomes of patients with type 1 or type 2 diabetes, as compared with the general population, are unknown. Pros and cons. Diabetes. We have newer anti diabetic medicines. I'm not going to cover them all, but let's first look at uh, trials related to SGLT2 inhibitors. Maybe, Chris, you can just kind of tell us what that class is and, and talk about some of the outcomes trials. You're not going to go into all the details, but give us a broad view. Well, this has been such an exciting time. Uh, and the first of these trials was the EMPA-REG trial with empagliflozin and SGLT2 inhibitor. It inhibits this the exchanger so that glucose goes out in the urine, but changes probably pressure in the glomeruli and kidney. Uh, you get weight loss, lots of other beneficial factors uh, with the entire class. And so out of surprise, there was a significant reduction in cardiovascular events and indeed cardiovascular mortality. So this caught everyone's attention. It really has ushered in a new era in our thinking about how to manage cardiovascular risk in patients with diabetes. Pros. The study suggests that using both apagliflozin and insulin has an advantage. Doctors measure values to see how well blood sugar levels are regulated over the longer term. This measurement shows the average blood sugar levels over the last few months. Cons. The studies show that apagliflozin has a disadvantage in terms of these side effects. Genital infections occurred in 15 of 800 patients who received both apagliflozin and insulin, compared to only 4 of 800 patients who received insulin alone. Issue applied in Ecuador. Recently, the inhibitors of sodium glucose co-transporter type 2 SGLT2 used for the treatment of diabetes mellitus type 2 have demonstrated a, a cardiorenal protector effect. Experimental assays and different studies have established 
that the inhibitors of SGLT2 reduce the progression of a hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, fibrosis, cardiac remodeling, systolic dysfunction, and heart failure. Ways. So one is so my overall impression was that this trial, like other SGLT2 inhibitor trials, again proved that there is substantial benefit in terms of reduction of heart failure hospitalization risk. As you know, there was a split uh, primary endpoint of this trial. The MACE endpoint did not reach statistical significance, but the combined endpoint of cardiovascular death and heart failure hospitalization did reach uh, the endpoint, which was positive. Conclusion, in patients with type 2 diabetes who had or were raised for atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, treatment with dapagliflozin did not result in a higher or lower rate of MACE than placebo, but did result in a lower rate of cardiovascular death or hospitalization for heart failure, a finding that reflects a lower rate of hospitalization for heart failure. Uh, one nice thing about Farsiga are at a higher risk for UTIs compared to There's also been reports of keto. Now we'll move on to side effects, and these mostly tie in with precautions that we just discussed. So urinary tract infection is one of the most common side effects you can experience because of the reasons we talked about. And this is much more pronounced in women. Women are at a higher risk for UTIs compared to men in general. Um, so this can happen in up to 6% of patients, and I would guess that this percentage would be much higher if we were talking just about females. Um, also, those that are 75 years old and older are at an increased risk of getting this side effect as well. Genital infections are also possible, and this is primarily in women. Uh, nasopharyngitis is also listed as a possible side effect with around 7% of people getting this. And this is basically having symptoms that mirror a common cold, stuffy nose, and inflammation of the nasal cavities. And when I see this listed as a side effect for a medication, it makes me wonder if the drug is really causing this. So in the clinical trials, if you get nasopharyngitis, it is reported as a side effect. Now the question I have is, is it really the drug causing this, or are these people just getting a common cold? I'm not really sure, to be honest, but it is listed as a side effect for Farsiga. You can also see an increase in urine output and nausea in a small percentage of people. Thank you.